Welcome back. In the last video we talked about the need for an alternative to produce pet petrochemicals from non-petroleum sources, so from a different source. And in this video we're going to go over a couple examples of the alternative sources, so how we can produce petrochemicals from alternative sources. So the actual dot point says use available evidence to gather and present data from secondary sources and analyze progress in the recent development and use of a named biopolymer. This analysis should be should name the specific enzymes used or the organisms used to synthesize the material and B provide an evaluation of the use or potential use of the polymer produced related to its properties. There's a couple of different points we need to look at. First of all, we need to be able to um, give a named biopolymer. So named biopolymer named means we need to have a specific example. And what a biopolymer is, it's just a polymer produced by something biological. So for example, an enzyme or a bacteria, which helps produce this polymer. So all the other ones we covered. So for example, we covered um, high density, low density polyethylene. These didn't have a biological polymer. They didn't have an enzyme or a bacteria to help make it. So they were not biopolymers. But the ones we cover in this one are biopolymers because there will be an enzyme or an organism that helps make them. So we need to name one, then we need to kind of, the number A part says we need to kind of talk about how it's produced and what enzymes and what bacteria are present. And the B aspect um, says we need to be able to evaluate what it's used for and relate those to its properties. So how the properties help make that happen as well. So first um, what we're going to do is we're going to quickly cover the history of PLA, which is the biopolymer. So it says na given named biopolymer, we're going to choose, in this video, we're choosing polylactic acid. But there's a couple other ones as well. So you just need to know one example. But in this video, we're going to cover polylactic acid. And it was patented in 1945. So what that word patented means is someone actually went to the patent office and said, I want to have all the rights to this, this one um, polymer. So that was done in 1945. So 1945, someone thought that it might be useful. This lactic acid polymer might be useful in the future. It wasn't really used properly until the 1990s. So commercially produced in the 1990s. So it was produced on a larger scale and to make money in the 1990s. Beforehand, it wasn't really used. And now, so now we're in 2011, uh, it's ever increasing in the amounts that it's being produced. So more and more of it is being made and more and more plastics are being made using this PLA. So it's patented in 1945 commercially produced in the 1990s, so more of it was produced in the 1990s. And now we're increasing the amounts that we're producing. So as time goes on, we're using more and more of this um, lactic acid polymer. So here we've got lactic acid, which is the monomer. Lactic acid also occurs in our body as well. But in this case, this lactic acid is monomer is produced by bacteria. We're going to cover what bacteria in a second. But this is the monomer. And what happens, is this is a condensation reaction. So you can see here we lose, so this is condensation, we lose condensation reaction, we lose a water molecule. So remember, if you have two monomers, so each of these is a monomer, you have two monomers joined together, and a condensation reaction occurs, that means polylactic acid is a condensation polymer. So PLA is an example of a condensation polymer. And this is the actual polymer itself. So it's going to be uh, quite a few hundred monomers long. So the A says um, name the specific enzymes used or organisms, organisms used to synthesize the material. So what we'll do first is we go over how it's actually produced. So if, what we do first is we, so we um, actually harvest cornstarch. So we get corn, which is supposed to be this yellow thing here. We get, make corn, we grow corn, and then we get the starch, which is in the corn. So starch is just the insides of the corn. And you can imagine that's just each of these is a glucose molecule. And if you have lots of them joined together, we get starch. So this whole thing is starch, but each of these is a glucose molecule. So each of these is a glucose, the whole thing is starch. So first step is we have these corn starches, and we do something called hydrolysis. Hydrolysis is the adding of water. And we add water to, room, to break these bonds in between. So by adding water, what we do is we actually break these bonds between the glucose molecules. So now they're broken. And then we have the individual glucose. So here we have the individual glucose molecule. Right, so first step is we have starch. 
we add water to make it into individual glucose molecules. And now comes the part that we definitely have to know, which is the, the use, the specific use of the enzymes or organisms involved. In this case, for this um, polylactic acid monomer, a uh, polymer, we don't produce, we don't need an enzyme. We need bacteria or fungi. So these words are the ones you need to know. The lactobacillus bacteria is one of them. Or, so we use either lactobacillus bacteria or we use Rhizopus fungi and this step here so the step that when you have these two either fungi or bacteria and what we do is we do something called fermentation fermentation so by fermenting glucose we will produce lactic acid so this was the monomer right the lactic acid monomer so this here was the monomer so we start with um, starch, break it into glucose. The glucose we ferment using either the lactobacillus bacteria or rhizopus fungi. And when we ferment them, we get two lactic acid monomers. And then we polymerize them in a condensation reaction to make the polylactic acid. These are the monomers. If we join them together, we make polylactic acid. Okay. That was number A. That's kind of the steps. Let's outline how this um, as this is produced. So using cornstarch, um, hydrolysis to make glucose, uh, fermentation using either rhizopus fungi or lactobacillus bacteria to make lactic acid monomers, and then we join them up for condensation reactions to make the condensation polymer called polylactic acid. The second part says provide an evaluation of the use or potential use of the polymer produced um, related to its properties. So here are some of the examples of what we use it for. We use it for, for, uh, sorry, rigid plastic containers. We use it for plastic bags and garbage bags. And we use it for dinnerware, plastic dinnerware, food wraps, and other plastic equipment, amongst other things, right? So these are some of the uses, but we have to relate them to the properties. So why do we use them related to our properties? So first of all, they have very high tensile strength. Similar to high density polyethylene, high tensile strength, which means we can make strong containers. And that word rigid, it's kind of the same as strong. So, one of its properties, which is that it has high tensile strengths, allows us to make strong plastic containers, such as milk containers or containers which are used to hold heavy materials. Um, Another property was that its flexibility has high flexibility, so high high flexibility and moldability. So with moldability, all I really mean is that we can mold it into different things. We can make different shapes out of it. Right? And the good thing with that is we can make it into lots of different shapes and things which are quite flexible, such as plastic bags and garbage bags. And garbage bags they have to be flexible they also have to be strong because if you remember garbage bags might carry lots of different things. It might be quite heavy, the things which might be inside, but you don't really want them to break. So garbage bags, uh, polylactic acid is a good good uh, polymer to make garbage bags because it's highly moldable, but also has high tensile strength, which is important for garbage bags. And this is probably the most important one. So this is probably one of the most important aspects of PLA is that it's biodegradable. Biodegradable means that it's going to break down. So bio is biology, and it's going to break down by itself. It's going to not take thousands of years, such as your plastics from petroleum. It will break down in a couple of years. So it's a lot faster. And that's good because we can make dinnerware, food wraps, and other plastic equipment that will break down. So it's good for the environment. It will break down a lot faster, whereas otherwise we wouldn't be able to really do that properly. Right? So... Um, we use PLA to make biodegradable plastics, and that's good for the environment because otherwise we would have plastics lying around which would last there for thousands of years and make a big mess as well. Now here are some of the limitations, some of the reasons why we don't use it too much. Here are the, our limitations. And at the moment it still has a very high cost, so it costs a bit too much compared to your other plastics from fossil fuels. And it uses cornstarch. The problem when you use cornstarch is we have to grow it. So we have to grow 
cornstarch. That means we need to use more land to grow cornstarch. Remember we have a, a food shortage as well, so I'm going to write food shortage. So at the moment we, we don't use too much of it because if we don't use, if we make PLA, we use this land which we could use for, for food as well. And that means less people are going to get fed. But in the future we might not use cornstarch, but we might use food waste. So use of food waste, this is in the future, not yet. So what we could actually do is we could simply um, use f food which would usually be in the bin and out of that food we would make plastics and that would mean we wouldn't waste any land and it would be all useful. So that would be in the future but that's not currently the, the method of making PLA, at the moment we're doing corn. But in the future we'll just use all that garbage, food garbage and make plastics out of that and that will eliminate that problem. And obviously one of the really key important aspects is also the word renewable. So un renewable, unlike plastics that come from petroleum, petroleum will run out, which is one of the reasons why we need to have an alternative. Whereas this kind of plastic, which we can grow on a continuous basis, is renewable, which means we can make more and more of it as time goes on. Even when we run out of fuel, petroleum will still be able to make plastics, but just from a different source. Right? So I'll go over all, everything again. We have, how do we make it? We have starch, which we break down through hydrolysis into glucose. Those glucose monomers are then, hydro, uh, are then fermented, so fermentation, using rhizopus fungi or, so, or lactobacillus bacteria. Then we produce your lactic acid monomer, which we join up through a condensation reaction to make polylactic acid. And that polylactic acid has a couple of different properties, such as high tensile strength, which makes um, rigid plastic containers because of their high strength. It also has high flexibility and moldability, which allows us to make plastic bags and garbage bags, for example. And the most importantly, it's biodegradable, which means it'll break down over time. And that means we can make lots of stuff which we make out of plastics, such as dinnerware and food wraps, but not feel bad about it because they won't be in the environment for ages, forever. So that's good for the environment. Some of the problems we have at the moment is that it has a higher cost, which means some of the industry people don't like to use it at the moment. And that we're using cornstarch, which means we also use land we could use for food instead. But that will be solved in the future when we, be, when we can find technology that allows us to use the food waste we produce to produce PLA instead. But yeah, also really important is that renewable, which means when we run out of fuel or petroleum, we can still make these petrochemicals using this PLA instead. So I hope that was useful.